comes back and dies, you take away that type. Now, what I find fascinating, and there's so many people, there's literally hundreds of comments on the video with Chuck Messler that, that were me and him. We actually were talking about the Sea of Reeds, but we get into that subject about the two witnesses that are coming. And many of the people on there, their argument over and over and over is it has to be Enoch because Enoch did not die. Elijah did not die, and they have to come back because the Bible says it's appointed a man wants to die. Now, I'm not a Greek scholar, but I have gone back into there to look at that appointed. It does not mean that you absolutely, if you haven't died, you're going to have to come back and die. Here's why I say that. Do you realize how many people that hold that doctrine and believe that based on that scripture also believe in a pre-tribulation rapture? And quoting the very scripture where Paul says, we shall not all sleep, but the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which remain alive shall be caught up together with them. You know, what is that? First Thessalonians, I believe, something like that. They believe in... It's fascinating. They believe in the rapture of the bride. So when then does the bride have to come back and die? If you're going to take and say that Enoch has to be one of the two witnesses because it's appointed a man who wants to die and he absolutely has to come back and die, then the bride then has to come back and die as well. When? Now this is for all of you that hold the idea that it has to be Enoch because of that scripture. See, see You see where you kind of get yourself at? You get yourself into a situation that doesn't match the Word of God. Enoch is a type of the raptured saints. Noah is a type of the tribulation saints. Noah is a type of the church that goes into tribulation. So if Enoch types the raptured saints, then how can we sit there and say that he has to die? So, and secondly, it doesn't match the Word of God. Now, because we're dealing with the issue of of Moses or Enoch. Let, let me just share with you. Gosh. All right. Can't read it to you just from Hebrews. So let me let me let me take you to um, Exodus, and let's take a look at. Um, let's go to Shemot Exodus uh, chapter. I believe it's chapter three. And. Um, Okay, and uh, I, I want to go down to the signs themselves. I, actually, actually, there's one thing I do want to point out to you real quick. Chapter 3, verse 13, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, uh, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. They shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Now, I do want to take for my Jewish brethren, I want to read that. Uh, I, I kind of stop on that just for a moment here. And the reason I do is because there is a lot of debate about God's name. And, of course, people that try to say uh, Jehovah, and forgive me, my Jewish brothers, as I say these things, uh, they say that, well, that name's incorrect. Well, of course it's incorrect. Uh, we put the vowels from Adonai in yod heh vav -Hey in Hebrew, to try to keep from saying something that we should not say because God's word says, take not the Lord thy God's name in vain. Well, then the Christians come up with, um, with the idea that, well, uh, Yahweh. Now we have the correct pronunciation of the name of God. No, you don't. No, you don't. You still don't. Um, and, and it's sad to say that to you. I hate to say that to you, but the reason why I say that is because if you can pronounce that divine name of God, that's powerful. It's like when you say Yahshua, we say the, His name. He said, in my name they shall cast out devils, they shall raise the dead, they shall speak with new tongues. You know, we, we know these passages here. I'm a witness of that myself. At the very name of Yeshua, Jesus, and for those of you that debate that idea too, I, I agree. I mean, if you know his name to say Yeshua, say Yeshua. But even there's debate over how to pronounce that. Is it Yeshua? Yahshua? 
just all kinds of crazy things out there. But yet I'll tell you this, in the name of Jesus himself, at his name, I've seen the blinded eyes open and I've seen the dead raised at that name. And I believe God gave that because one, he brought salvation through Yeshua and which means Jehovah is salvation. So doesn't mean Jehovah will send salvation or anything like that. It means Jehovah is salvation. So there again, identifies who he was when he came. But let me just bring this out again. I think, what was that, verse 12 where you read from? Uh, in the Christian Bible, I think it's verse 12. Uh, in the Hebrew, a little different. Uh, no, I think it's still the same thing. Yes. Ve'yomer Moshe el Elohim hine anochi ba'el b'nei Yisrael ve'amati lahem Elohai avotechem shelachani elayachem ve'amuli they will say to me Mashimo what is his name ma'omel elachem what do I say to them that is going to repeat itself. And Moses <clears throat> is about the only guy that will be able to tell him that. Of course, Elijah knew the name of uh, Hashem as well. Uh, so he will know that as, as well. But anyway, so he says that. What, what should be the name? But anyway, I want to get back, though. There's a more important verse here I'm trying to bring you to. Uh, and this is when God gives him the signs that he gives him. Um... Let me just find that for you real quick here. Uh, we know that, let's see, and I will give this people favor in this. Okay, behold. Uh, okay, it's actually in chapter 4. And we're going to go to verse 7. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom. And again, he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out in the bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Now, I have said this to you guys on videos before. Think about what he's saying here. Now, let me read this real quick for my Jewish brethren. Uh, chapter 4, verse 8. Uh, Shemot. Um, bear with me just a moment here, please. Dalet. And uh, we go to verse 8. Vahaya imlo yamenu lecha velo yashmu lekol haot. Okay? If they don't... See, notice what he says there. Yamenu lecha velo yishma Ishmu, excuse me, Ishmu, le haot. If they don't believe the voice of the first sign, Harishon, le kol haot Harishon, which is the voice of the first sign, ve hamenu le kol haot haachron. They shall believe the voice of the latter sign. Do you realize that Moses' voice itself, he was the voice of God to the Jews of that day. And he was assigned to them because what he said come to pass. And it seems odd for God himself to say, if they don't believe the voice of the first sign, in other words, if they don't believe your voice when you come the first time, they shall believe your voice when you come at a latter time. And then we wonder why we have here the two witnesses. And this has nothing to do when, when, when uh, Yeshua meets, takes up uh, the three witnesses and they meet with Elijah and Moshe, Eliyahu and Moshe, on a high mountain. And by the way, I do kind of question whether or not that mountain really was in Israel. I have to, I'll, I'll talk about that another time, but I, I kind of wonder if they didn't go up to Mount Sinai because Jesus said he led them up. Do you realize, I don't know if you guys know this also, let me just kind of say this. Elijah, when he was here, he was a very interesting guy. Do you realize that Elijah on a regular basis supernaturally was hid by God? He literally would move from one place to another, so to speak, kind of be like, Let's say you were in Florida, in, in Miami, and he moved you from Miami to Tampa without taking you by car, and he was there at the blink of an eye. 
like the story of Philip. Philip goes and he preaches to the Ethiopian eunuch, and then the next thing you know, about 30, 40 miles away, he ends up at the coast, uh, coastline over there uh, just uh, south of Tel Aviv. And then, you know, he's caught away in the spirit. Well, Elijah, this was normal. And how do we know this? Because Obadiah, when Obadiah runs into Elijah in the street, he's so fearful, he says, go get the king Ahab and bring him here. And he says to him, kind of paraphrase it, he says, like, you know, I, do, what have I done wrong? Because if I go get him, you won't be here. Because every time the king has sent for you all over, the, all over everywhere, no place has he not looked and can't find you. Because God takes you out. He's always hiding you. Go from one place to another. Look at when Ahab was coming down in his chariot. Elijah just girds up his clothes and, and he's ahead of him. Runs ahead of him. How does he, how does he outrun the chariot? Interesting, just interesting thoughts here for you to think about here. But anyway, so I forget where I left off at, but let's continue on. Moses, though, he is that sign. Oh, I know what it was. Let's go to Exodus chapter 15. And there again, you know, you guys, you've seen me talk about these bits and pieces here. Um, and I have never fully put it all together for you. But it says, then saying Moses... Uh, and the children of Israel, this song unto the Lord spake, saying, See, now here it is, personal pronoun, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Now, horse and his rider. There were 600 that came down in that day when Moses was on the seaside. This has already happened, but Moses sings about one horse and one rider. Now, let me go into the Hebrew for you, just this for my, again, um, uh, Achim Achim Shali, my, my, my brothers, uh, the Yudim, the Jewish brothers there. Let's look at that 15. Now, you know, the Jewish brothers, we know, we know already. I mean, Rashi brought this out to us uh, in the Midrash that. Moses, because he says, "As Yeshua Moshe, Uven Yisrael et Hashira," you know, and, and they would sing, and, and, and Moses sings with the children of Israel at uh, this song, "Hazot Ladonai veYamu Lemor," saying, "See, Ashira, personal pronoun again, Ashira." I will sing in the future. Ashira, let me get, gotta get back. I lost my place here. Ashira, Ladona, Kiga, Aga, O, Sus, Verekavo, Ramabeyon. One horse and one rider is cast into the sea. It's the Antichrist spirit. Moses comes back. He sings the song of redemption. It, does, does the scripture not say in the Christian Bible the 144,000 they sing this song? that no one can learn but them? Why? Because Moses and Elijah come back and Moses teaches them the song of redemption and they sing the song. What? Friends, Revelation 15, it, it kind of conjunctions with this. I'll just share this with you. It's, it's just fascinating. And even for uh, my Jewish brothers, this is really interesting. You know, so many years, we look at the Christian Bible as, oh, don't read it, it's got all kinds of mistakes. It's dovetails perfectly with our Torah and, and the Tanakh. Um, Revelation chapter 15, verse 1, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. Judgment is about to strike. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name and stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? They sing the song of Moses. How'd they learn it? He came back. But notice Moses is not with them. Because why? One of the two witnesses, he dies. Marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true. They sing, excuse me, they sing the song of, uh, 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 excuse me, they, 
Let me back that up. I forgot to tell you the whole thing. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so they recognize who Moshiach is at that time. So th the point is, is we have scriptural evidence written plainly in the Torah that shows that Moses will return. God says to him, if they don't believe the voice of the first sign, they shall believe the voice of the latter sign. Actually, yeah, of the latter sign. That would be correct in, in the translation. They will believe the, the sign that comes afterwards, the voice of the sign. So Moses has to return because the children of Israel never really believed Israel in that time. God wiped out everybody except Caleb and Joshua out of the original ones. He wiped them all out. Where was the faith? It, it, it wasn't there. Now, here, here comes the debate, though, and uh, I believe it's... What do I have down here? This is where the one person that did the video that debated who the Elijah of... Uh, you know, as far as he, he, he debated the idea that I, that I said, I challenged the idea, where has Elijah come and restored all things? So he takes over to Luke chapter 1 uh, in the Christian text here. Let me just read this to you. Um, I'll tell you what. Before I read Luke chapter 1, because what he's going to do, he's going to take here in his, in his argument, if you listen to the video there, he basically tries to prove that John is the, is the, um, the Elijah that, that was to, the, the Elijah of Malachi 4, quite frankly. Um, Jesus makes an interesting comment. Let me just share this with you here. And this is kind of where the debate got started there. Jesus says, uh, and I don't have this scripture marked down, but if you, I'm sure you can find it easily if you just put on, uh, well, I, I can pretty much quote it, not exactly, maybe word for word, but I can quote it. They ask him, doesn't the scripture say that Elias, that's the Greek word for Elijah, doesn't the scripture say that Elias must first come? And Jesus answers them and says, truly Elias shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you, he's come already, and they did to him whatever soever that he listed. Now, people seem to miss that. Jesus puts that coming of Elijah in the future to restore all things. And, but then he speaks of John the Baptist. Now, don't forget, as I tell you this, you have to remember Isaiah 61, where Jesus comes in the temple, he picks up the scroll, and he reads... You know, uh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to, to preach an acceptable year, to, you know, um, let, 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 me, let me read it. I, I don't want to get into something and then you, then you lose this later. Um, in Isaiah, Yeshayahu, Shashim um, Bechad, in Isaiah 61, Jesus is actually quoting this verse right here when he reads it to the children of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, and he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now he stopped in the middle of the verse, and he put the scripture down, the scroll down, and he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Okay? or in your sight. I forget which one he says there. Now, does not the rest of the verse 2 apply to Jesus as well? Yes, but not at his first coming. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. That is a future coming of Jesus, Yeshua. That is when he returns. That is For the, for the house of Israel, that will be his first coming. For, for the Christian, the second coming. For the house of Judah, the second coming. But he comes, nonetheless. Now, so we see that it's not uncommon for him to do just part of a verse. So in Malachi, uh, for my Jewish brother that, that, that watches this video here, in the Christian Bible, they said they make a fourth chapter out of our third. It's still, though, in the third chapter of Malachi, but in the Christian Bible, it is in the fourth chapter. 
uh, because they break it up into an extra chapter. I, I, I don't know how come or why that actually happens, but they do. Um, but let's real quick take you to that. And uh, pardon me, I keep scratching. I'm sweating over here. And uh, a little warm here. Actually, it shouldn't be too warm, but it's just the heat and stuff from the lights. Um, but in Malachi, gosh, it's like so close right here, and these pages are so thin. Okay, Malachi 4. Behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble, in the day that cometh that shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that shall leave them neither root nor branch. Now that's, the, we're, we're living at the time where God is going to burn up the people. So quite frankly, John did not come during that time. Nothing happened like that right after his, his, his coming. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth as, and grow up as calves of the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, and for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded uh, unto him in Horeb for all the Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Eliyahu, Elijah the prophet, Eliyahu Hanavi, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Hmm. Now, this brother here is going to take you, though, and he's going to say that this is fulfilled in John the Baptist. It's not before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, though. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. But... We're going to find that Jesus does apply part of that verse to John. Let's look at that. Luke chapter 1, and this is where he takes us to. There's one other place he takes it. Uh, don't have time to go into that one as well. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. The only part of the verse that Jesus quotes is part of the verse. And then people assume automatically the heart of the children to their fathers. Let me, let me just make sure I got that one right. Go back. No, excuse me. The heart of the fathers to, their, to the children. That's what it is. The heart of the, heart of the fathers to the children. Uh, and that's, let's see, the heart of the fathers to the children, So, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. He doesn't quote the second half of the verse, and the heart of the children to their fathers. He doesn't quote that. Why doesn't he quote the second half of the verse? Just like with Isaiah 61. Verse 2. The second half of verse 2 applied to the second coming. And so it's not... It's, it's ironic, but perfectly in line with the scripture. The second half of this verse here didn't apply to the first coming of Elijah, or not in this case, first coming of Elijah, but it didn't apply to the Elijah of the day of, and it's kind of interesting, didn't apply to the day of the tribulation that struck, that was going to strike Israel in 70 AD when Titus would besiege the city. Because, by the way, that was the great tribulation that Jesus spoke of, where he said the day would come a tribulation that had not been seen on the earth or never shall be thereafter. I think that's Luke 24, if I'm not mistaken. Now, there's people that, that, that have always applied when Jesus talks about that tribulation there, they apply that to a tribulation that's coming in the future. It can't be. And how do we know it can't be? Now, I don't have that in front of me. Maybe I could find it rather quickly for you. I would like to find that. Uh, but the reason why we know that that is not the tribulation that, is, that Jesus is speaking of, um, it's funny. I say here, I turn to Luke 24, and I see the verse right off the part here. Then he said unto them, Fool, O fools and slow of heart to believe all, that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and entered into his glory? I think that today, especially amongst the Christian people, 
fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. You know, you just, you take this one over here, you take that one over there, but you're not taking all the word of God. That's how that brother on Facebook, that's what he did. He's taken over here and he's looking at what's going to happen when Israel is, is gathered a nation. He's looking at the millennial reign. Yes, there will be peace during that time. But he's failed to see that God brings her home, not because for her sake, but for his name's sake. Jesus prayed the prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done. What did he do that for? See, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Sanctify thy name, O God. Make your name say, Jesus' prayer was to bring back Israel to her homeland. Let me just show something to you here, especially to this brother on, on, on Facebook. That, that, that has, I mean, he did believe good at one time. He believed that, yes, I would have argued with you. In 1948, that became a nation. It was the hand of God. It was the hand of God. Now, is it Zechariah's prophecy where it said they would be born in one day? No. That's when they recognized Moshiach. That's Zechariah's prophecy. But he still has to get them in their homeland because he promised that Israel will not be blessed until she's in her homeland. Jeremiah chapter 36. Let me just read some of these. Or, oh, wait a minute. Is it Jeremiah or is it Ezekiel? Hang on one second, my brothers. I, 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 and I may have the wrong chapter. Hang on. Bear with me here. I want to share with you something here. Um, let me just find that real quick. I say Jeremiah a lot of times, and I think it's actually Ezekiel. Yes, Ezekiel 36. My apology. Ezekiel chapter 36. Moreover, the word of the Lord, verse 16, came to me saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own ways and deeds. To me they were as was like the uncleanness of a woman in her customary impurity. Therefore I poured out my fury on them for the blood they had shed on the land and for their idols which they had defiled it. So I scattered them among the nations and they were dispersed throughout the countries. I judged them according to their ways and their deeds. When they came to the nations, went, uh, wherever they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said of them, these are the people of the Lord, and yet have they gone out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which, is, which the house of Israel has profaned among the nations, wherever they went. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake.